What's up guys, this is Gabe from SMP Speed Innovations and today we're driving this beautiful 2004 Tacoma. This Tacoma is a customer up in Colorado. He drove from Colorado down to Phoenix, Arizona, purchased this vehicle, brought it straight to us. We're doing a supercharger install, TVS 1320, doing a cat back, a headers, uh, intake tube, and of course our Haltech ECU system. What's very unique about this truck is it's only got 71,000 original miles. Beautiful truck, 71,000 original miles. It, this thing's an amazing shape I've never seen one this clean so let's go for a ride so the truck has a little bit of a wobble to it you see it kind of shaking a little bit it does have some wheel spacers on it and we're gonna pull the wheel spacers off and then pull the wheels off and have them balanced and checked and everything and see if that's what the issue is definitely get that sorted out before the customer gets it other than that for a truck that's got 71,000 miles original miles and of course it's a Toyota so these things go 300,000 miles not a problem at all it actually feels pretty good, other than the vibration a little bit of uh, something's off, which I think is in the wheel spacers, but um, it actually drives pretty good. The rings nice and tight, pedals are nice and tight. The clutch is a little funky. Uh, it wants to stick to the floor just a little bit. That's probably because it hasn't been driven much. It just needs to be driven. My favorite part of the drive right here. Get to see the lake every day on my way to work. Now let's take it to the dyno and see what's going on, see what kind of power we're gonna make. This is the air fuel ratio here, right? You see. All right, so point, point 0.1 lamb does about 14.7. We can see the switch point. Is this speed? Can we change this to RPMs down here? Yeah. So this is about the switch point. Is usually in this range here is where the computer switches over from a closed loop to open loop. It's usually typically very, very lean until it reaches that switch point here. And we can see it's still 0.9 lambda which is probably like what is that 14.5 uh, air fuel ratio well you can see right about 3500 it starts to get a little richer a little richer and a little richer through the rpms so that's pretty normal for these computers see so a 0.94 uh, that's that's pretty lean of course we're also running on fumes right now and we've already removed the screws so at that point we just pulled this out now for customers using our adapter harness, your factory harness will plug into here. So you can see that your connectors plug right in just like this. I'll take this and stuff, stuff this inside. And the Haltech ECU gets plugged in to the other side of the harness. Chino removed the gas tank for the fuel pump install. Take a look and see what we've got going on. Nice and clean inside there, as it should be. Fuel pump assembly looks immaculate. This is out of the 71,000 mile Tacoma that's here. We're doing a bunch of upgrades. We're looking at the fuel pump here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get into unboxing the 340 liter per hour fuel pump. Most of the installation instructions is pretty universal. This is going to be proprietary to the first gen Tacomas and the third gen 4Runners, which is all about the same generation of Toyotas. About that same 95 to 2004 range that 4Runners fell off a little earlier. But anyway, 5VZs, 2RZ, 3RZs, basically. <laughs> They have the, the spring spacer up there and they have the Bilsteins on it and everything. But in the back, what we noticed is something a little different. Now, right now we have it relaxed to the most that we can. We have ratchet straps on it so that we don't break the brake line here. Because as you can see, 
the brake line is super tight. It had two short shocks on it and was not allowing it to drop down all the way. So definitely was not a properly installed lift kit. Um, it had the blocks in it, the U-bolts, the shocks were for standard length, and it did not change the rear brake line. So if they had not, if they had the, the proper length shocks in it, it would have broke the brake line. So obviously it wouldn't be bad. Trying to level the camera out as much as we can. This one is higher than this one. We have the driver's side header completely bolted to the cylinder head. Those bolts are loose so that we can move that crossover pipe there. PBS 1320 install modifications for the Toyota 5EZ. What we're seeing here is the modifications you have to do to clear the blower snout. Make sure you get your threads in there tapped pretty deep enough to where you can get the probe of the air temp sensor into some of the air stream. But the most important thing is making sure you get a good seal. So usually about three quarters of that tap. is we're going over there we're gonna travel up to those mountains we're gonna do an elevation change so my current elevation right now is about 2460 feet we left lake havasu city my shop is close to 700 foot elevation what we're doing is barometric pressure sensor correction it's a new product we just added this not too long ago right there to the left of the ecu is the barometric pressure sensor 100 feet now 4,000 feet that's where we're going over there in the distance. Well, this video has come to an end, but this uh, truck will go on forever. We are very excited and honored to be a part of this project with Eric Iverson. This is what he calls his forever truck. He never plans on getting rid of it ever. And you should feel that way. And we're glad that somebody has trust enough to trust us with this truck. And then the passion to keep something forever and put every, all the combination parts in it to make it right. Really, really nice truck. So. Um, you want to see more content like this, please let us know. Otherwise, don't forget to do all that soccer stuff, like, subscribe, all that cool stuff, and um, stay tuned. Thank you.